Good morning, guys. I um, just realized it has been three months since I have posted anything, and we are getting ready to come up on our one year in the trailer at the campground. We just recently moved um, to be closer, to, I don't know if you can see it, to be closer to the lake. And let me tell you, it makes a world of a difference. Uh, we were packed in on the other side, kind of on a gravel area, which was okay to begin with, but um, it, it was just too close to other people. And um, the head of my bed is right inside of our slide that slides out. And the people that pulled in next to us put a table and chairs, seriously, right next to our slide. And they're up all night laughing and drinking and it's honestly like having them in the bed with me I had to go out and very nicely explain to them that I got to get up at four o'clock in the morning so please so uh, when they opened these sites up out on the grass uh, by the lake I was like uh, we got to move so moving is a day-long experience. I took the day off from work uh, last Saturday and it took us all day because you just don't understand how much hooking up and making sure everything is balanced and even and I had to uh, secure the whole inside of the trailer because you know you don't think about it when you're parked full time but a lot of this stuff can just go flying around whenever the trailer moves so you have to be careful of that and uh, so I took the opportunity to just give it a really good cleaning as well pulled up all the carpet and stuff and uh, cleaned the wood floors and so it got a really uh, good cleaning and um, kind of just decluttered and whatnot so anyway, uh, we moved and um, and it's been better. I, it's just a better vibe over here. It feels good. So as for my eating and keto, um, I'm still, you know, uh, muddling along. I did try sort of a uh, different schedule a few weeks ago. If you all remember, I did... Um, kind of a step down where I was eating uh, two meals a day uh, with uh, keto coffee in the morning but and that was fine but then when I um, stepped down to one meal a day it wasn't that I was starving um, you know I eat enough fat to keep me full the problem was I work so hard during those four days uh, that I do work. I work 10 hour days and you know some people are like oh I work a 14 hour day. This isn't sitting down. This isn't standing still. I am basically running full tilt for 10 hours pretty much straight. Lifting you know um, heavy stuff off of high shelves cleaning um, or not cleaning but um, you know climbing stairs climbing ladders and um, I found it just wasn't enough uh, I was weak and felt like I needed more and so I gave in I think a few days into it and realized that I was going to need calorically more because of uh, all the energy I was expending during the day so um, I, I was kind of distraught over that uh, because I felt like I'm enough of a I'm not gonna call myself an expert but I'm an expert in my body but I know enough that I know what I should have I, I should have known prior and I mean, I did. When I did pack my one meal, it was a lot. And I was eating it at noon. And the problem therein lied that I only had about 20 minutes to eat. And for me, because of gastric bypass, I can't force myself to eat 
really dense foods like I was having bison or lamb or something like that uh, already cooked and then reheated and then I like to use either mayonnaise or um, I pulse up some avocado so that it's kind of um, soupy. Uh, I need something that's going to help all that denseness get down. I was having a problem with that. I would get halfway through and I would get that stuck feeling that you get. And if you've had bypass, you know what I mean. You just get that pain in the center of your chest and you're like, oh, no, I'm done. And then it stays there. Um, sometimes you can gag it back up. Uh, maybe it's just a piece of something sitting wrong. Maybe you've got bubbles underneath it. That's another thing. I have to self-burp myself as I'm eating that quickly, even with, say, raw veg or anything like that. So, you know, keto is one thing. Keto with, you know, restriction like bypass is another. So you've got not just the fact that you've got to get in all your macros in one meal, but you've got to, and I had to get them in fast and then get right up and go zip right back to work. A lot of times my stomach would be upset. Um, sometimes I ate too much fat too quickly. Sometimes, like I said, I had bubbles and it, it was just, it wasn't working. And then I was going to fast after that um, until I went to go see the doctor about my uh, mesh. That didn't work either because I had I was I started back to eating twice a day so that I could get enough energy to work and then on my days off I found that I still needed to eat because I had some lag so I would wake up on Monday morning and I would be famished and not just famished like I need a carb famished like I want meat I need fat so my body just craved it and at six o'clock in the morning I was eating burgers just big greasy burgers so I managed to even back out again um, I, I'm still I'm feeding myself at work better so I'm managing that better but I ate all the way up to my appointment I didn't feel quite as inflamed or or what what not as I had prior and when she saw me, she was like, you have like zero body fat on your abdomen. So this is going to be hard to fix. What we can do is we can go underneath the muscle on the side and do laparoscopically, basically blow you up with nitrogen, open you up on the side, put a piece of mesh, another piece of mesh, a better piece of mesh, I guess, underneath the muscle against where I have the opening. And then we'll go over and we'll tear off the one that's uh, sitting on top. And I thought, eh, I don't think so. I mean, I feel like I, I would just be trading one set of problems for another. First of all, another surgery. You know, you have to get put under um, all kinds of meds blowing me up, which I hate that, and uh, pain management afterwards. On top of that, the space that is uh, open, that they're covering with the mesh, I said, you put a, a piece underneath, I'm going to have a big divot. Like, when it heals, there will be nothing holding the skin, you know, parallel to the muscle. Won't it just kind of cave in and I'll have kind of this weird looking valley in the middle of my belly. You know, it'd be great if it looked like six pack, but it won't. It'll look like a big divot. I'll look deformed. Like right now, I have a bubble, but only when I do ab work because it pushes the intestine against the mesh. So it's not really obvious. Well, except to me. So I was like, no, I... I think since this is not critical, it's not endangering my health, you know, I'm not in any kind of danger, I think we're going to wait it out. 
and, and just see what happens. I may be able to live with this. Basically, I went in because I'm having these pains, these weird crampings around where the mesh is. And she said, it's probably just the uh, muscle infiltration. It's grabbed onto something. And now every time you move a specific way, that muscle cramps. She said, it might happen after we remove it. We don't know. We don't know. So she said, you can live with it. You can learn to live with it and do your ab work a different way because it's really starting to impact how much I work on my abs. Like I haven't worked on my abs in forever because of it, because it terrifies me. If I bend on my left side, down to my toes, in any kind of positioning, on my back, standing up, even working my obliques on that side, it's sort of like if you've ever had a Charlie horse, but in my guts, and will throw me to the ground. Now, not in like serious crying pain, but it hurts and it takes a while to go away. So I'm like laying there trying to control my breathing, stretch it back out again, make it stop doing whatever it's doing. And, um, it's annoying. So now I can't even shave my leg on that side without something happening. I can feel it coming on. So I'll like do one line and then stop and stand up and be like, okay, calm down. It's fine. And then slowly do it again. I mean, it takes forever to do my left leg anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm letting that go for now. But I was supposed to fast up till there. She didn't want any blood work, so it wasn't a big deal. And then after that, I kind of went into this spiral. I'm overeating, but I'm overeating veg. So I'm eating a huge, a huge volume of vegetables. <laughs> and nobody but ever got obese on vegetables, especially just raw, plain vegetables. And I don't know why, but my body is just great. I, I obsess about vegetables. I eat vegetables like I've never eaten before, you know, and I've never had this feeling before. So I eat, uh, you know, celery and cucumber. I can eat two whole cucumbers in a sitting. That's too much, even of a cucumber. And I just continuously have been eating. Now I've tried to um, narrow it down to, you know, three sitting meals a day. I'm trying to make that concerted effort, but I will catch myself, you know, going to the fridge and getting a cucumber or getting a squash or getting a zucchini. I will eat the whole thing just sitting there and I can feel it. Like I could feel I felt like I was distended and bloated. And I know it's a huge amount of fiber. That is a huge amount of fiber to be eating. I mean, I'm going through two cucumbers, two zucchini. I'm even eating carrots now, the little baby ones, which are not keto, but my body fat is so low now and my I'm not insulin resistant anymore. I feel like I'm I've overcome that. So now I'm more kind of insulin, insulin, I guess you would say normal. Um, I don't have spikes like I used to. I don't get hypo-reactive anymore. Um, and I can eat a large amount of vegetables and it doesn't really affect me weight-wise, feeling-wise, energy-wise. I'm I've pretty normaled out now, I think. But um, I find also that it makes me crave yogurt. Now, I love yogurt. I love plain Greek yogurt, especially um, <clears throat> the really thick ones. I love those. They've got like five carbs in them, full of great bacteria. And I am all about my microbiome because I'm all about never being constipated. For me, now some people can go two, three days. If I go longer than a day, I am angry. It, it just makes me angry. I, I feel like I'm carrying around a brick inside of me. I, I feel better. I, 
I work out better, I live better when I feel like I can start the day cleaned out. So for me, yogurt is a thing. Uh, not keto, but, and I didn't do it in the beginning when I was t uh, doing total carbs. I would never touch um, yogurt. This only started after I started maintaining. And I was really focusing more on fermented foods and making my microbiome as strong as it could be. So I eat uh, fermented okra. I eat pickles like they're going out of style. I eat, uh, recently I started buying some fermented artichoke hearts, which are good. And um, what else do we have? Some fermented green beans I found. A lot of this stuff you got to find at Whole Foods because otherwise they're packaged in like soybean oil or sunflower oil and you don't want any seed oils whatsoever because I don't know about you, but for me, if I eat a seed oil, dude, my joints just start aching. Um, any kind of seed oil, canola oil, it, it, just any of those, if they sneak in anywhere, I can feel it. Like we took my son out for lunch at, uh, where was it? Oh, Charlie's somewhere. We took him out to lunch and I had their cob salad or something. And I, I, at one time we'd get their Caesar on the side because, okay, it's got some crap in it, but it's a small enough amount. And I probably only eat half of the little thing they bring me. But after the last time, it made me so sick. Like within 30 minutes after I ate, I was in the car just my head was exploding. So uh, this time I was like, just give me olive oil. You know, it'll be fine. And I said, you have olive oil, right? Oh yeah, we have olive oil. Liar. <clears throat> it was olive oil, but it was a cut of olive oil. Like you can buy a cheaper oil. It says olive oil and then it'll say with canola. So they mix olive oil with canola oil. And stupid me, I poured it all over and ate it, and sure enough, within 30 minutes, I was in the car with just, my head was on fire. I just cannot have seed oils. They kill me. And I think they put something, they must put something on their vegetables. I just can't eat there anymore. I, I mean, there's a few things in there that look safe. You would think lettuce, you know, um, vegetables would be safe, but I feel like they're either coating them in something or spraying something on them or maybe putting some MSG on them. I mean, I know just like everywhere else they have test kitchen and maybe they're like, well, this salad just tastes like salad. We need it to taste more like not salad so people will eat it. And we'll just spray this shit on there and, oh yeah, it tastes better because sugar or, you know, whatever. So now I'm terrified to eat there again. And I'm like, if we take Avery there again, I just, I'm going to have to just have water. So, um, and the same with anywhere we take Avery. Avery has to have a place where they make like a big greasy burger and stuff. So, um, taking him to a sit down place that has a booth, it's all very specific for Avery. So it's like Cracker Barrel or, um, you know, O Charlie's or, Applebee's or somewhere like that and they all have basically the same greasy nasty menu and even their salads you know fried chicken salad you can get a grilled uh, chicken salad but that I still don't know what they put on just because it doesn't have any breading on it doesn't mean that that chicken is actual chicken that doesn't have anything in it or on it so I'm just always wary now and not because I'm some sort of elitist Look, I, I'll, I've eaten straight food. <laughs> I, I will eat, I could eat anything at one point in my life. It's just that now that I've been keto for so long and my body is cleaner, now when I eat that stuff, it ruins my whole day. You know? I mean, it, it literally can put me down for the day. And so now I'm terrified. So... I try to save special occasions. And we used to do Mexican. Mexican is like 
Joe and I, that's our thing. Whenever we're stressed, whenever we're happy, whenever we celebrate, Mexicans are a thing. Love Mexican. Him especially, and he will push me into it. You know, I won't suggest it. He'll text me and say, Mexican. But lately, I, we just, we can't. We can't. It, it takes the rest of the day away from us. So, we just, we, it's sad, but we stop. So, um, celebrating now is more towards Panera. Uh, and even then. And then we have a little place called Egg and I, which I adore. Um, that is really clean. Uh, they have a lot of really clean food there, and I've never had an issue with them. But I think in the next few months, we're cutting down on eating out anyway. We just bought a piece of property, and we're closing on that at the end of the month. This will be to build our death home, our retirement home, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be a very tiny house, probably about 900 square feet, and it's going to be designed by us and probably partially built by us. Um, the land is really close. It's in an area that Joe really likes, and I'm not so sure about it yet. We'll see. Uh, once we close on it, we're going to camp on it, and I'm afraid of the noise level because it's on an intersection, kind of an out-of-the-way intersection, but still has traffic on both sides. So I'm concerned about that, but he loves it, um, so... That's what I was most concerned about, is I need him to be happy with placement. So, But we're closing on that. We can't camp on it, so we can't drag the trailer over it, because everybody is like, oh, you bought a piece of land, you're just going to put your trailer on it? And no, the county doesn't allow that here. Um, there's too many issues with that kind of thing happening around here. You have to be a lot more country. Uh, and there would be no sewer hookup or anything, so... Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, we wouldn't be big on boondocking. Um, I mean, we could, but I think we're comfortable here at the campground. And even though it's farther away than we want to be from town, um, at least we have sewer and water and electricity. And it's, I mean, it's not that bad of a price. So, but we probably won't be taking too many more uh, vacations this, this year. We're pretty cleaned out. And uh, we're going to start thinking about the house and, and how to build it and all that. So, food choices. So, I've been doing some research on, uh, of course, keto, heart disease, cancer, yada, yada. I've got some uh, friends that have uh, issues with cancer and other uh, neurological diseases and things that I've been just looking into and seeing, you know, it's hard to bring up keto to somebody when they're dealing with a life-threatening disease or disease that's really life-changing like that because they already know if they're your friend and they've been following you, they already know that you are um, an advocate of keto, you know. And I don't discount anything. I didn't drink the keto Kool-Aid. You know, I... I do this because it helps me and I share my experience, but I know that there are people that don't respond and I know that everybody's individual. So what works for me may not work for you, but why not try it? What, what can it hurt to try for, you know, a couple weeks, 30 days, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, then tweak it. You know, nobody knows your body like you do. So, you know, I don't defend keto to the death because I know that it doesn't always work. But I know what doesn't work for anybody is diet and exercise. Uh, if it did, nobody would be doing keto. <laughs> so, you know, the standard American diet and then exercising 10 hours a day just doesn't work. Exercising, to me, is a lie. You should be exercising because you like to exercise, because it benefits you as an organism 
not to lose weight because you won't. It stimulates cortisol, which stops fat burning. It also builds muscle. Um, you do stimulate uh, the production of more mitochondria, which is always good. The more mitochondria, the better. And, um, you know, but exercise as a weight loss technique, not good. Your body is built by food. And if you change your diet and don't move a muscle, you will lose weight. It's just a fact. So, uh, I haven't increased my exercise. In fact, I decreased because I walk, run, jog, climb at work four days a week now. So I don't feel the need to overdo it three days that I have off. So on my off days, when I go to the gym, I basically sit in the sauna for 30 minutes. I like, um, I like the effects of sauna, a good hard sweat, you know, it seems to relax me. And then I might go walk on the treadmill if I feel like spending time on my phone answering emails or whatever, but I don't overdo it. You know, I put it on like a two incline at like a three and I just kind of saunter. So, and I do that for like 30 minutes. I haven't lifted weights in quite a while. I don't feel like I need to. The other day, Jesus, I must have, I must have picked a hundred cases of soda. And if you've ever list, lifted cases of soda off of like, there's seven levels of shelving. If you have to lift soda or dog food or cat food or bags of dog food or cans of soup or anything in volume, that, that's, a, that's a lot of working out. And I have left there very sore. So I don't do traditional weightlifting or any of that anymore. I do some stretching after my sauna and that's about it. So, um... But I've been thinking about seasonal eating and I saw a lot of things uh, online and listened to some people online about um, eating seasonally. You know, um, it's true that when we were, you know, before civilization, I guess you could call it, before industrial um, farming, you know, we had to eat what we could find. So... There weren't apples all year round. There wasn't asparagus all year round. Uh, these things all have seasons. So what if, for say a month, I only ate what was seasonal? So seasonal for me in Virginia would be, um, for the spring, would be March 20th is the first day of spring and June 21st is the last day of spring. So within that, I looked it up, and for Virginia, the only three things that grow seasonally within that time frame are asparagus, spinach, and strawberries. I'm eating all three of those right now, but I'm also eating a lot of stuff that's not in season. So I thought, with this whole vegetable obsession thing I've got going on, what if I cut it down? I'm not saying militantly, but most of the time tried to stick to those three. Now, strawberries I eat probably a few days out of the week. Um, I like them. And berries for me are not an issue. I don't overdo it. So um, I could probably stick to that asparagus, spinach, and strawberries until June. And then the middle of June, once you get to June, you get a whole nother set of, like, they have a, um, an infograph I found that you can kind of track for your um, region what grows seasonally. And, um, and also, there's going to be a farmer's market opening, it, opening up, I think in May, right down the road. And so I'm thinking, you know, maybe just buy, instead of spending so much money at Kroger, buying all this stuff. I mean, it's going to be hard because Joe is a creature of habit and he likes to have a ton of stuff available. So he's still going to want those things that are not in season. But I would like to try to cut out. I don't know. 
it may or may not work, but I think I'll be more uh, aware of what I'm eating and try to keep it uh, more seasonal. So, and another thing I was looking at was cold stress. Um, Mike Mutzel at High Intensity Health does a great series um, on brown fat and mitochondria growth and um, infrared sauna and uh, cold stress from like dunking in cold tanks or going in a river or stream or whatever. And this is the truth. Um, you're born with a lot of brown fat because uh, you need to stay warm. Right, but as you get older, you lose a lot of that brown fat. It turns into white fat, and so uh, because you have the ability to shiver to keep yourself warm. Um, but brown fat is a lot more metabol metabolically active, and is actually good for you to have. So you can actually um, switch some of your white fat back back into brown fat by doing some of this, uh, you know, cold cold therapy. So, but you have to be kind of submerged in the cold until you start shivering. Um, and what it does is it makes you more kind of metabolically flexible so that your body can tolerate temperature changes better. Same as sitting in the, the sauna, you know, you're, you're going from, uh, an, you're going to an extreme. So I was thinking about this. He did a, a video this morning about how to build your own uh, rainwater catch system in this kind of 110-gallon, uh, one of those uh, metal, looks like a one of those things your horses drink out of. And then you just filter the rainwater off your uh, house into this tub and, you know, get into it, sit in it until you start shivering, I guess. Um, I have to do some more research on it because I've tried a few times after working out, kind of just taking a really cold shower, leaving it on as cold as I can for as long as I can, getting all up in the armpits and everywhere uh, until my teeth start chattering. The problem with that is um, I don't think it has the same benefit and I can't do it for very long. Uh, I don't know if sitting in it would make a difference than standing in it. So, like I said, I'm going to look into that some more. And the last thing I'm looking into, or that I was considering, that I probably at some point said I would never do, is um, exogenous ketones. So, I, I've always told people, you don't need to buy that stuff. You make your own ketones. You do, you do um, keto right. You don't need that stuff. It's just a waste of money. But after I've been following uh, Dominic D'Agostino and um, Tim Noakes and a few other uh, keto kind of gods, um, you know, that do research and stuff, I'm, I'm not going to discount exogenous ketones. I'm at a spot now, when I spoke to the surgeon, I asked some kind of out of context questions only because she's a doctor and I just wanted another you know opinion so after we stopped talking about the mesh and everything I asked her because I was so um, obese at one time your body holds on to fat in specific places well when you lose a lot of fat a lot of times what happens is you still have deposits your fat cells don't go away. They just shrink. So I had so many in specific parts of my body that even though they're shrunk, they're still there. And so I have larger areas, specifically my behind and the backs of my thighs. Those are my the two areas that no matter how many squats I do, no matter how much leg work I do, it doesn't matter how toned underneath it is, it still looks terrible. And I don't know if losing more weight would be beneficial or what. So I was kind of feeling her out in that regard and asked, and she agreed that I have barely any body fat from the waist up. I carry all the extra body fat I have is from my waist down. 
And she said, I don't think that there's another way to do it unless you lost more weight or had plastic surgery. So I obviously don't have the money for plastic surgery. And I said, well, if I lost more weight, though, I already look fairly gaunt. And my upper body has shrunk to the point of I can't even wear a training bra anymore. It's too big. I, I have skin issues um, that I managed to hide pretty good, but from my waist down is always the last place that the fat comes from. So she just, she didn't know. She was clueless. She said, well, if you lose more weight, you just need to watch and make sure that you're getting all the minerals and it was just a bullshit line that doctors, the only thing doctors know what to say. Anyway, make sure your doctor's following you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I thought, well, if I tried some exogenous ketones, just to see what happens. God, I went online. They are so damn expensive, especially the good ones. Like, like you want something that's formulated right. You don't want to buy something from, like, you know jackass labs that just says exogenous ketones um, and there's no kind of science or anything behind it. It's just somebody in their garage making it. So I looked into Prove It. I didn't like what I saw through Prove It. Um, they really look like a multi-level marketing scam and their product is so overpriced. It's stupid. I did look at Perfect Keto and they seem to be run by a lot more kind of a sensible, the man that actually developed it is a doctor, which I know it doesn't mean much, but um, it looks like it's a better formulation. You know, it's got magnesium and calcium on top of beta-hydroxybutyrate, um, and it has stevia and caffeine in it and it has zero of everything else and you do like kind of like a scoop of this powder I would put it probably in my coffee in the morning and then what it would do would raise your beta hydroxybutyrate your ketone levels um, and probably keep you full I mean I don't know what the the effect would be in me because I, I absorb differently and my gut's different. So I think I would have to experiment with it. It might cause me disaster pants. Who knows? But I I think I might buy a canister and just, just to kind of self-experiment and do it for, say, two weeks and see if it um, takes away some of this vegetable obsession, maybe makes me feel fuller, longer, I don't know, maybe it'll change the way I feel about eating, because um, my eating's not emotional, I really just want vegetables, it's not brought on by anything, I just want to eat vegetables, so, I mean, I could see, you know, a lot of times emotional eating involves sweets, like, I really want something that's fatty and sugary and that's the way I used to be when I used to eat emotionally when I was obese you know I could sit down and eat you know two dozen donuts just one right after the other if I was sad or happy or whatever if it was Tuesday if I was emotional in any way I love me some donuts and um, you know spaghetti lasagna all those things that have a huge amount of carbs in them give you that heavy, full feeling. I don't want that anymore. I don't crave it anymore. Um, I smelled lasagna the other day and I was like, oh, that smells really good. Would I put it in my mouth? No, no. I wouldn't put noodles of any kind in my body ever again. Um, it's just not in my best interest. But I can still say, oh, that I remember what that tastes like. It was really good back then. Um, but maybe the, maybe the exogenous ketones will give me kind of a, 
that boost I need. Who knows, it may affect the way I lose weight. It might make me lose too much weight. I might have to stop it. It might be a waste of money. Uh, I watched a lot of reviews on YouTube uh, for and against the, um, the Perfect Keto. I, it was hard to find anything against. Most people that used it had good success and said that they had appetite suppression, lots more energy. Uh, of course, ketones taste like crap. Mix it, you know, most of them said just mix it in with something, you know, your coffee or whatever. And the Perfect Keto got really good reviews, um, you know, because it has no carbs and, you know, the only thing is it's $59 for a tub and the tub has 15 servings of 14 grams a piece, which is, I think, 11.38 grams of beta hydroxybutyrate um, per scoop. So that's quite a bit. Uh, and it does have a supplement of calcium and magnesium in it as well, which is always good. Um, I'll always take the two of those. Um, so I guess I'm still thinking about it, but I might, and I was trying to find it locally. I can't find it anywhere. I don't think you can get a uh, perfect keto. You can't get it at vitamin shop or GNC. Um, I, I Googled where to find it anywhere in my area. I think you have to order it either from the um, from the maker or from Amazon or somewhere like that. So um, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. So anyway, all right. I think I've got 41 minutes. So I think I babbled on long enough. You see, my hair is growing out. I've got a I've got a sleep spot back here. It's not laying down properly. I actually cannot wait until this grows down onto my forehead. I'm so over this part of it. I love it when I first shave it and it's so easy, but then when I start getting these little bits that, you know, don't have a home or make me look like my son said, look like Spock. I look like Spock with this. It's awful. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have a good day. If you have any questions or comments or anything, please uh, leave them below. Uh, I try to get back to people as soon as I can. I'm, I'm off three days a week, but the other four, you're not going to catch me. I'm not usually on YouTube so, or on uh, Facebook or anything. So y'all take care, and I will try and make another video soon. All right. Peace.